Wilson. Good evening. We'll get to the stories we headlined in a moment. But we have late news tonight about a congressional report coming out tomorrow that will show White House contacts with now convicted lobbyist Jack Abramoff and his associates were far more extensive than the White House has ever acknowledged. And the report will state that prime among Abramoff's lobbying targets were the man who is now chairman of the National Republican Committee and Karl Rove, the president's top political advisor. It will be something of a bombshell in Washington tomorrow, and our chief Washington correspondent, George Stephanopoulos, is joining us. George, I know this, this report comes from the House Government Affairs Committee, which, of course, is led by Republicans. What do we know about what's in it? That's right. It's chairman is Congressman Tom Davis of Virginia, Charlie. It's the House Government Reform Committee, and it's an investigation based on a detailed examination of the billing records and the emails they received from Jack Abramoff and his associates at his firm. What it's going to show, as you suggested, is far more extensive context than we've been led to believe in the past with the White House and the Republican National Committee. It also has some circumstantial evidence that Abramoff was able to get some, some action on behalf of his client from the administration. Uh, it also will detail uh, offers from the Abramoff and his associates of uh, dinners and concert tickets and other kinds of meals uh, and, and drinks to White House officials. Again, far more extensive than what we've heard about in the past. But George, after Jack Abramoff pled guilty to illegal lobbying, officials at the White House said they barely knew him, that, um, that he had come to a couple of receptions and that all they knew was what they read in the papers. So how have we been able to quantify how many contacts he had with White House officials? We're starting to. According to the report, what I've been told is that there were about 450 contacts uh, with White House officials, including nine contacts with the president's chief political advisor, Karl Rove. It, it also shows that Abramoff tried to get uh, 20 people hired uh, in the administration. In this case, it shows he was only successful, though, once. And does it allege any illegal contacts or any illegal lobbying? That's going to be the fight. There will be some questions about whether or not uh, these concert tickets, meals, drinks offered to White House officials violated uh, the gift ban. That's going to be something uh, at issue. There does seem to be, as I said, circumstantial evidence that Abramov did get uh, what he wanted on behalf of his clients. I should say, though, that the White House says what this shows is that uh, Abramoff was singularly unsuccessful as a lobbyist, even though he was trying very hard. They also point out that this investigation is largely based on his billing records, his, um, his emails, and that he's been shown to have lied in the past. All right. George Stephanopoulos reporting from Washington. This obviously will be a major subject of debate tomorrow in Washington when the report is released. Ask Jack Abramoff if I'm an insider in Washington, which you probably have to go during visiting hours in the prison, and, and, and he'll tell you, and his lobbyist cronies, of the, of the, of the change I made there. I don't know if he wants that answered or not. Let's bring in MSNBC political analyst, Air America radio host, Rachel Maddow. Good evening, Rachel. Hi, Keith. Uh, to the bully Cunningham in a moment. First, yeah. the, what, what is the McCain-Abramoff story here exactly? 2006, John McCain was the head of Senate in the Indian Affairs Committee. The okay. report on Abramoff was designed to figure out the reach of the Abramoff scandal, how far that corruption spread. Mm -hmm. And we now know, because of Sam Stein's reporting, that one of the things the committee had in terms of evidence was an email from Jack Abramoff saying what he expected from Alabama Governor Bob Riley in exchange for Abramoff contributions and Abramoff client contributions to Riley's campaign. We know that Riley took those contributions. We know he did what Abramoff was demanding from him. And now we know the missing piece because of those emails that Abramoff had formulated those essentially as the demands that went along with the contributions. What we don't know now is why John McCain never published those emails, why he sat on that and let that let that report be published without once including Bob Riley's name in that report. All right, so we're, what it's looking like here is we're going to get a McCain lobbyist story, an average of every 2.3 days.